Sports Park in the west of Sydney on a gorgeous Saturday night. And what will be the second of two ball games at the Blue Sox? And the Adelaide Bite will play tonight in Sydney. You can see on your screen right off the bat that the Blue Sox are sporting a bit of a different look tonight. And it's all for a good cause. The Australian Baseball League and the McGraw Foundation have partnered up here in round one to raise awareness for breast cancer. And in doing so, the Sydney Blue Sox are sporting a lovely fluorescent pink. And those jerseys will be auctioned off and given away at the end of tonight. And it's all for a good cause. And we are getting set for our third game of this series. Again, these two teams have already played one game today. That was the first game of the doubleheader in which the Sydney Blue Sox won in walk-off fashion. It wasn't your traditional walk-off win. Jacob Eunice scored in the last of the seventh inning after the ball got away from the catcher. Adelaide led for a majority of that contest, but Sydney came back late and ended up winning it. There you see the starting lineups for these two teams. Not all that different from what we saw earlier in game number one. You see the starting pitchers as well. Two very interesting stories in Chris Powell for the Adelaide Bites and Clayton Flymuth for the Sydney Blue Sox. Adelaide Bayon have a very interesting lineup. It's yet to click really offensively. We saw the top of the order in Ariaza and Day do some good things in the first inning of that first game. And no doubt Chris Adamson will be hoping for much of the same here in our second game of the day, the third of round one between the Blue Sox and the Adelaide Bayon. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. You can get in touch with us on Twitter at hashtag ADL Sox. We are just about set for the first pitch of our third game of the weekend. And the offering is in for a strike. It's Rodrigo Ariaza who will lead things off. Ariaza Day and Stephen Lohr, the three two-ups for Adelaide. Ariaza doubled and scored in the first inning of that game earlier today. Adelaide jumped out to a 2-0 lead. This one's bunted back to the pitcher. Freymuth has it, throws to first. And that's how we start proceedings tonight. Ariaza going out, trying to bunt his way aboard. There's one guy here in the first inning. Clayton Flymuth, he's an interesting story. The starting pitcher for Sydney. We saw Craig Anderson, who is a bit like a bottle of Pinfold's Grange. Just gets better and better with age. This young man, Clayton Freymuth, has been all over the world playing baseball. The tall lefty, standing about six foot five, 220 pounds. His first offering, the left-handed swinging Darius Days in for a called strike. He's a Texas native, and mentioned he's traveled around playing baseball. He's actually most recently played in Germany. The next to the lefty is swung out and missed, quickly nothing into it. He does possess a lively fastball, speaking with Tony Harris. He, He's excited about what this young man might bring to the starting rotation for Sydney. He's got another in his arsenal. Another fastball and good morning, good afternoon, and good night to Darius Day. He struck him out on three pitches. And Clayton Freymuth has impressing the home crowd early. Darius grounds out to the pitcher on an attempted bunt. Uh, Darius Day is now struck out looking. And here's the right-handed swinging Stephen Lohr. He takes the first and a fastball for a called strike as well. Tony Harris is another German connection in his pitching staff with Sven Schuler. We've seen before with the Blue Sox. With Clayton Freymuth, he's hoping, could be a bit of a wild card. He's looked good with the first two batters he's faced. Nothing in one to missing high and inside. One ball, one strike. Lord did single and his three at bats in the day's earlier game today here in Blacktown. And the next two, back up the middle, off of the pitcher, and it gets away from the second baseman. Boy, Finkelson at second base was on a dead sprint toward the bag to try to make a spectacular play up the middle. It ricocheted off of Freymuth. 
and Finkelson, in trying to plant his feet, rushed the other direction, had no chance. It lost the footing underneath him. It'll go as a single for Stephen Lord. It'll extend the inning to Tyshawn Chang with the immediate concern is with the pitcher Clayton Frying you because that ball was hit pretty hard. Off the bat of Stephen Lord, he appears to be okay. Tony Harris comes out to have a look along with the athletic trainer for the Blue Sox. Now we get our first look at the Taiwanese import, Aishan Chang. It much was made about his signing with the Adelaide Bite. He had to make much of a splash in his first two ball games, but this is baseball after all. Ryan Youth delivers a fastball in the dirt. It gets away from Chang. And Stephen Lohr will advance with relative ease down to second base. We'll run you through the defensive lineup for Sydney quickly. Left to right to the outfield is Alex Howe, Michael Campbell, and Michael Suki. Chai Sen Chang is at third base. Jacob Eunice, who scored the game winner earlier today, played short. The 41-year-old Gavin Finkelson at first. Connor McDonald on the infield with him. And Jinji Jang is the man behind the plate. And the next offering, an off-speed pitch this time from Flymew. Falls in for a call strike. And the count is even on the affectionately named Tarzan, Taishan Chang. Hitting at the designated hitter spot for Chris Adamson. And the 1-1, swung out of this. Throw down, oh, we had a pretty good chance. Now Stephen Lohr straying off of that second base bag, but he slides back in safely. Well, no joy for Chang in the day's earlier game. He flied out three times in his three at-bats. But a legitimate RBI opportunity for the Taiwanese import. Two gone, a man at second. The one-two from Freymuth. And hit the opposite way down for a base hit. Lowell on his way home from second. He will score the bite lead 1-0. And Chang Taishan has his first Australian Baseball League RBI. Nothing fancy from the right-handed swinger. Got a pitch that he could do something with. It just lifts it over the head of Connor McDonald at first base in the Adelaide bite. And taking a one nothing lead, sort of inside out with a ball that was on the hands a little bit of a breaking pitch. And Tarzan busts out. And the Adelaide Bite at a one nothing lead in the first. Here's a hard hit ball off the bat of Roger. And that will extend the inning. I think it's Roger jumping on the first pitch from Clayton Freinu. Lines it into center. This will come right into your living room. And a couple of hard-hit balls. It comes in the territory when you throw a pretty good fastball, as Randy does. General step I say is Kiros. The right-handed swinger. I mute. Starts him off with a fastball, and that's in for a called strike. You'll also be doing the catching for Adelaide. It might take some time for Chris Adamson to figure out this lineup. It's a mixture of old and new in terms of imports, a mixture of old and new in terms of the Australian players. This ball's lifted in the left, and that'll get down for a base hit. Chang will score, heading to third, and staying there is Roger. It's a two-out RBI double for Kuros. And the Adelaide Bight have taken a 2 nothing lead in the first. Four consecutive base hits for Adelaide after Clayton Freymuth retired the first two that he faced. And just as they did earlier today, Adelaide have put a two spot on the board in the first inning. And it's not been anything fancy. Four consecutive singles. Laura Chang, Roger, and now Kiros. You'll see this ball just 
Pulled into left field, hit that one off the shoe tops over the head of the third baseman. And Che running on contact with two outs, scores with ease. But Jordan McCardle now is the seventh man to come to the plate in the inning. The first from Frymuth missing off the plate in the fastball. He's thrown a lot of strikes. Don't see many balls out of the zone from Frymuth, but with that comes a lot of contact. Credit Adelaide. They've Gone after him early in the count after seeing those first two hitters. Aryazin and Darius Day both retired, but now four consecutive singles. Adelaide has jumped on pitches early. They wouldn't have a lot of tape on this left-hander. This one's taken high on a fastball, two balls and a strike. Says Bob Crawford, our home plate umpire. Frymuth trying to limit the damage. The 2-1, fastball low and away. Three balls and a strike. With the ex-Brisbane bandit, Connor McDonald, waiting on deck. I think they call Hoshke waiting on deck. The next from Frymuth, a 3-1 that swirled off foul toward the left side out of play, and the count will go full. Bit of a weird day throughout the rest of the Australian Baseball League as some of the early season numbers on Clayton Friday. They don't look good to this point. ERA at 27 after allowing two runs here in the first, but he's trying to get out of it. The payoff. Runners off with the pitch. Instead, it's fouled straight back as McCardle just gets a piece. And we'll do it again at three balls and two strikes. Angus Roger aboard at third. Isaias Kiros, the bottom right of your screen at second. Another payoff to McCardle. Low ball four, the bases are loaded. It's now five consecutive hitters that have reached base here in the first inning for Adelaide. And where it started with some promise. For that young man, Clayton Frymuth, has snowballed a bit here in the first inning of the ball game. Well, Carl Hoski has a potential opportunity to blow this thing wide open very, very early. The first two, the right-hander, he swings and misses. He was trying to do just that in the first offering from Frymuth. Swinging 0 and 1, fouls it off toward the right side. No balls and two strikes. An Adelaide team that has not started well at all the past few seasons, and if you take the 0 and 2 start to this point this season, you can say that that's happening again. But it's one thing you say about this club: they haven't led the phased in the last couple of seasons. And nothing in two to Hoski and a notion to swing, but held up, says Bob Crawford, and the count's one and two. And you look back to last year, Adelaide dropped three of four to Sydney to begin the season, right here in Blacktown. In fact, lost four of their first five, but ended up being a playoff team anyways. The one, two to Hoski, swung on and missed. And the inning is over. It was eventful for Clayton Frymuth. with Adelaide. They score a pair, including the first RBI of the season for Tyshawn Chang. Two runs cross for Adelaide. We go to the last of the first. Sydney coming up on ADLTV.com. game to the next level with black chrome custom compression improve your performance with increased power
train harder and faster. Maximize your recovery with increased blood flow. Show your true colors with black chrome. This is Max Scherzer with the Washington Nationals, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. Two nothing Adelaide Bite as we head to the last of the first inning in Blacktown, and it's a relatively chilly November afternoon, turning to evening, but a good night for baseball nonetheless. A good night for a good cause as the Blue Sox sport there. Pink McGraw Foundation uniforms that will be auctioned off following tonight's game. You're getting a look at Chris Powell, who is the starting pitcher for the Adelaide Bite. Our first look at the young right-hander. 25 years of age out of Upland, California. The Los Angeles Dodgers draft pick a few years ago in 2015. Father who played in the major leagues and make his debut in the Australian Baseball League tonight against the Blue Sox. It'll be D'Antonio Fingelson and Jindy J. The three do up for the Sydney Blue Sox here in the first, to, just as they did earlier today, facing two nothing deficit. The first two D'Antonio missing off the plate for ball one. Trent still looking for his first base hit of the day. He's 0 for 3 in the first game of the double dip this afternoon. And the next two D'Antonio again off the play. Two balls, no strikes. So Chris Powell, he reached as high as double A, did the starting pitcher for Adelaide. It was released by the Dodger organization earlier this year in 2017 and landed in the American Association and pitched out the rest of the season with Sioux Falls. Behind in the count to D'Antonio, the 2-0, fastball in for a cold strike. Line drive up the middle and a big set, D'Antonio. Well placed over the glove of Ariaza at shortstop. There's his first base hit of the afternoon. Going you know, for three earlier today, he leads off the last of the first. With a single up the middle. Nothing fancy as it often isn't from Trent Antonio, but the captain just seems to get the job done time and time again. And Gavin Fagelson will stand in. We're getting our first look at the 41-year-old here on ABLTV.com. Of course, has been running in baseball circles for quite some time here in Sydney. But as soon as Tony Harris was announced as the manager, it's obviously a mutual respect and friendship between he and the skipper. This one's back up the middle. That's off of Powell. He recovers underhands and gets the out. Antonio will scamper on down to second base. It's the second time we've seen that already. A comebacker off of the pitcher. And Adamson will come out. The rest of the infield are looking after the right-hander. Going to have a quick chat here to the athletic trainer, it looks like. Powell looks like he might be in a little bit of strife. We'll get another look at it here. Just so hard to jump out of the way. At 60 feet, 6 inches, those comebackers, Craig Powell, he did recover and gets the out at first base. And it might have come at a cost as the entire infield continuing to look after him. See Adamson look back and a quick conversation with Bob there. See the change your banking can make. Bendigo Bank. Be the change. This is Noah Syndergaard of the New York Mets, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League.
the shot and Lord will do it. Oh, that time on the block as Dick Buck from Sweden fell to Clay Killen before his goals were finally put into the record with the Nebraska shot that Clay set up. As we remind you, the 88 online shot is up and running. 88 shop dot com is a dot au for all your 88 merchandise needs. Then you're getting hoodies, caps, gear, caps especially, t-shirts, and much, much more. 88 shop. Thank you. 
Two today. Swung out and missed in the dirt. Jong has to pull it out. He throws on to first. And the inning is over. Good work by Freymuth. He retires the side in order after the shaky first. We go to the last of the second inning. Tied at two in Blacktown. Coming up to that is two of these. Technical gremlins that have crept into our broadcast tonight. We do appreciate you sticking with us. Late and Sydney tied at two pieces. We hit the last of the second inning. It's been a bit eventful day already here in Blacktown. Phenomenal ball game earlier today in which Sydney topped the bite. In walk off fashion, Jacob Eunice crossing the plate in the bottom of the seventh inning to win it. Sydney 2-0, the bite looking for their first win of the season. As the left-handed swinger Alex Howe will lead things off for the Blue Sox. And the first to him is in for a called strike. It'll be the 8, 9, and 1 spots in the Sydney order. If anyone reaches, Gavin Finkelson will hit. As the Blue Sox look to bust up the 2-2 deadlock. Here's a bouncing ball to second base. Easily handled over there by O'Gorman, and there's one gone in the inning. Hey, let us know where you might be watching from using the hashtag ADLBiteSox. Let me see from the square mark in the right hand corner of your screen. I certainly do my best to interact with the fans out watching tonight, knowing that we might have. Large Taiwanese contingent certainly tuned in tonight. We've already seen Cheng Taishan get his first RBI in the Australian Baseball League as this ball is punted foul off to the right side. You 
Yunus getting his first at bat of this ball game, and he scored the winning run earlier today. The next from Powell, two hops toward the left side. Really good pickup over there at third, and the throw across the diamond in time, where Stephen Moore has had a couple of phenomenal plays over there at third base already today. It's all in the first play of the game. In game one of the double header earlier today, here he makes it up. That's not an easy play. Backing up to his right, backhanding. And showing off the strong arm across the diamond. That's pretty good work from Steve Orr. There's two gone here in the second inning. So in will step, Trent Antonio. Singleton scored back in the first inning, part of that two-run first for Sydney. And the 102 Dan Antonio on the ground to the right side. Foul, counting for the ball to strike. And Chris Powell trying to essentially match Clayton Freymuth here. Freymuth gave up two in the first, then retired the side in order in the second. Powell's trying to replicate that. He's retired the first two. And the 1-1 coming to D'Antonio's off the plate outside. Two balls and a strike. One just missing off the plate. Three balls and a strike. Gavin Finkelson no waits on deck. A really good crowd starting to gather in Blacktown tonight. Three balls and a strike on D'Antonio. The offering missing off the plate outside again. And that will extend the inning to Finkelson. Didn't miss by much on those deliveries, Chris Powell, but Chris Antonio got himself in a bit of a hole, really patient at bat from the left-hand swinger. And now Fingelson will stand in. Another left-hander. Sydney lineup that has plenty of them. D'Antonio is going. The pitch inside. The throw is well high. It's a stolen base for Trent D'Antonio. And Sydney now had the potential go-ahead run, standing in scoring position. Well, the throw didn't do Adelaide any favors, but I don't know if that throws on the money that they're even able to get D'Antonio's. He got an excellent jump off the right-hander, Chris Powell. The pitch inside, so the catcher sort of just had to deal with Fingelson being in the way. Really tough with a left-hander. And now Fingelson can notch his first base hit of the ball game. The Blue Sox could potentially take a 3-2 lead. Two balls and no strikes. Powell checks the runner and deals. Off speed pitch in there for a called strike. Engelson, an interesting case, as talked about a minute ago. Very good friends with Tony Harris, the first year manager for this Blue Sox team. Once it was announced that Harris would be managing the club, Fingelson was all ears about coming to play for the Blue Sox. And at 41 years of age, here he is. This ball on the ground to second base. Good pickup by O'Gorman. Should be the inning, and it is. So Chris Powell's able to pitch around a two-out walk. D'Antonio Strong at second. We go to the third. Good ball game on ABLTV.com. Tied it to a piece.
Sox Stadium, the Blue Sox and the Adelaide Bright, heading to the top of the third inning, tied at two apiece. Andrew Rose, glad to have you with us wherever you may be on ABLTV.com tonight. Appreciate you sticking with us as well. We had a few technological issues tonight with our producer director, Craig Abercrombie of Digital Sports is on the case. So, told you all of those issues will be fixed in just a matter of moments. We appreciate you sticking with us through thick and thin here at ABLTV.com. Technology is not always our friend. We do love it, but it's not always our friend. It's a bit of a love-hate relationship sometimes, is it not? The Adelaide Bites. The game of baseball seems to be a bit of a love-hate relationship. Today's first game is anything to go by. The first few innings of this one, they led through quite a bit of baseball today including that first game of the day in which they dropped 4-3 to three to the Sydney Blue Sox. And they led 2-0 at the end of a half an inning today. But a two-run bomb from Sydney has wiped that lead away. And the score is now two runs apiece here in the top of the third inning. Stephen Lohr leading things off. He fouls this one off out of play. And the count's even a ball to strike. It'll be Lohr Chang and Angus Roger, the three do-up. For the bite here in the third inning. Three runs on four hits for Adelaide. Three runs on three hits to this point so far for Sydney. And the next allure again is pushed foul off toward the right side. The counts a ball and two strikes. than a majority of the clubs in the Australian Baseball League. It's certainly a very dispersed import class this year for the Adelaide Bidens. This one misses high. They count even two balls and two strikes. The prospects both of the Astros and the Texas Rangers. A guy like Stephen Lohr of the Rangers. That's a bit of upside. Plays a good third base. Then you mix in the veteran presence, all-star presence, all-world presence of a guy like Taishan Chang. It, it's an interesting team, Adelaide. If they pitch well, which they certainly did in game one, Jack O'Loughlin was fantastic for Adelaide. If they pitch well, they're going to give themselves a chance to win ball games. Still very early in the season. Here's a fly ball to Campbell in center. And Lewis retired for the first time tonight. That's out number one here in the third. We'll certainly take this time to remind you about the Bendigo Bank Baseball Buddies and Bendigo Bank, a proud supporter of baseball right here in the Sydney community. I'd like to acknowledge tonight's Bendigo Bank Baseball Buddies. Bendigo Bank and the ABL are bigger than baseball. A lot of big things to come from the ABL and Bendigo throughout this season. It's the first to Chang is fouled off out of play toward the right side. Community round that will come a little bit later in the season. A very special community round it will be, sponsored by Bendigo Bank. More to come from the ABL on that front in the coming weeks. As Chang a bit tied up here on a ball inside, but he's able to check his swing and the counts even the ball to strike.
The 1-1. One -one. Low again, and the count's two balls and a strike. The Adelaide teams in the past that have had success have never necessarily looked powerful on paper. At least to start a season. Here's a hot shot ground ball to Eunice. Knocks it down, throws across, gets the out. And there's two gone here in the third. Stick to it of this third for Jacob Eunice at shortstop. Taking one step to his right. Baseball nearly ate him up. It was hard hit off the bat of Chang. Better than shortstop. Sticks with it. Makes the play. It was two down here in the third. So two out. Here's Angus Roger. He's after struggling a bit in the first. Clayton Frymuth all of a sudden has retired the last six that he's faced. Including a couple of strikeouts. Three strikeouts actually in those six hitters. Looks to make it seven in a row and complete his second consecutive one, two, three inning. Next to Roger, fastball that misses low. And the counts a ball to strike. Just reached the half century mark as Flymuth in terms of pitches thrown. A lot of pitches to throw through. Two and two thirds, but you take into account the lengthy first inning in which he threw to eight hitters. He's he's been good. This one missing low again. Two balls and a strike. coming to Roger and he fouls it off behind home plate to even the count. Actually hit that off the leg of Kiros who was waiting on deck just to the left of the home plate area here in Blacktown. Kiros just sort of looked down, looked back at his teammate and said, you're going to come pick this up? Youth, a strike away from getting out of the inning and putting up another one, two, three frame. This one's on the ground. A couple of hops to left. What a pick up at third. Throw across by Chang, and the inning is over. One, two, three. Go to the Adelaide Bite. Seven in a row set down by Clayton Friday. If we go to the last of the third, tied at two in Blacktown. This is Max Scherzer with the Washington Nationals, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. To the last of the third inning in Blacktown, Andrew Riddles with you here on a picture-perfect night for baseball in mid-November, the opening round of the Australian Baseball League season. Certainly glad to have your company. You can get in touch with us using the hashtag ABLBiteSox. We do appreciate you sticking with us through a few technical glitches that we have had tonight. We do apologize for those, but hey, it's technology. You never know what's going to happen. Craig's nodding his head at me right now. <laughs> Producer-director Craig Abercrombie doing, doing all he can, folks.
You just sometimes you don't know. But one thing we do know is we, we've got live baseball and Jinda Jong is going to lead things off and he hit one of those live baseballs very, very hard a couple of innings ago. A two run shot into right field that tied the ball game to two apiece. And the first offering here from Powell is over for a called strike. The saying, I think that's probably one of the hardest hit balls I've seen at this ballpark. With the exception of Boss Motorola's home run for New Zealand a couple of years ago in the World Baseball Classic. Although, talked to Mark Marino earlier today, and he said that one that Michael Suki hit last night in the right center field is probably the hardest hit ball that he's ever seen at this park. Who would have thought that we'd be talking about Blue Sox Stadium being a bandbox? Five home runs in the first two-plus games here in this ballpark. It's a stadium that only allowed eight home runs to either of the two teams that were playing in any of the 40 games that were played here last year. Or 20 games, I should say. It ended up only being 19. And it's one of those games is a washout. That ball, Jin Jong hit back in the first inning. Might still be traveling. It was hit well over the groundskeeper's shed there in right field, down the right field line. This is a ballpark that is very, very fair. It is by no means easy to hit home runs out of this stadium. The next to Jang. This one missing off the plate, and the count's full. Jang will be followed by Chi Sin Chang and... Michael Suki, who hit one of those home runs last night. And the payoff pitch to Jung. Just a little bit low, ball four. And that's the third walk of the night issued at this point by Chris Powell. And flirting with disaster, walking the leadoff man in the middle of this Sydney order. As Chai Sin Chang will now strut to the plate. He grounded out to second base in his only previous at bat tonight. It's things like this. It's, this is what Adelaide did in the first ball game today. They had opportunities to put Sydney away. They allow a base runner on a walk or commit an error. There was a costly error in that ball game earlier today. It's, the little things sometimes that add up to a victory. Sydney's done them in the first two ball games. And for Adelaide, it's meant to no win and two loss deficit to begin 2017. Not uncommon for Adelaide, though, to start off slowly. It's the 1 0 to Chang. His line past the shortstop and into left center, a base hit. A wide turn for Jong at second. He will stay put there. And the Blue Sox have put the first two on here in the third, threatening to take the lead. This was a rope off the bat of Chang. Hit very, very hard over the head of the shortstop. Look for a moment. Like Ariaza may have a chance. Pretty good hops there at short, but it was just over the webbing of the glove. And sensing that, we'll get a visit to the mound here for Adelaide and Chris Powell. Powell bounced back pretty well after that ball in the first inning off the bat of Fingelson that ricocheted off of his leg. It looked like his plant leg, the right leg for the right-handed pitcher. He threw a couple of pitches afterwards and looked okay. It was only a couple of pitches later that he allowed that two-run shot to Jang. It's tied the ball game to two apiece, and now he finds himself in a bit of strife with nobody out in the third. Michael Suki standing in. And the first two Suki is high for ball number one. Mentioned Powell was released by the Dodgers earlier this year, looking to get himself back into 
affiliated baseball after spending the majority of 2017 in the American Association. This is how you earn your stripes. If you put yourself in jams, you pitch your way out of them. It's the next one to Suki missing low and inside, 2-0. On the flip side, Michael Suki spent the majority of his time in Altoona, Pennsylvania, the Eastern League, double-A affiliate of the Pittsburgh Pirates. The right-hander awaits the 2-0. On the ground to third. Could be two. They go to second for one. On to first. Not in time. Suki just beats it out, motoring down the first baseline. Adelaide do get one, but Jang will advance to third, and his men at the corners have one gone. Well, that's nice hustle. You love to see that from the young 24-year-old. Suki doesn't run all that well, but he got down the line. Somewhat of a tough play at third there for Lohr. Got the sure thing at second, but the turn just not in time. Jordan Taylor in a good spot to make the call. And Powell's not out of dodge just yet. Here's Michael Campbell. And a breakout rookie season last year for Sydney. We'll check on the runner at first. Suki dives back in safely. And could Campbell be the one to put Sydney on top? Boy, this game is eerily similar to the one we saw earlier today in the first game of the double dip. Swing and a miss here from Campbell. And the Adelaide Bite have not started all that well in seasons past. They dropped three of four last year in this ballpark to begin the season. In fact, dropped four of the first five last season. Before coming up just one game short of the ABL Championship Series, where they were the two seasons prior. Remember that extravagant ABL Championship Series in 2015 at Norwood. And they dropped one to the Bandits in 2016 before missing out last year. This ball has popped up into left center. It's sending the center fielder back. Day makes the catch. It might be deep enough to score the run at will. It's a sack fly to center for Michael Campbell. And the Blue Sox have taken a 3-2 lead here in the last of the third inning. The, in, the outfield was playing in. And once that ball took Darius Day back toward left center field, there was never really any doubt that that would score the runner from third. This is a sack fly for Michael Campbell, and it's a 3-2 Blue Sox lead. Here's now is Connor McDonald. Can he extend the inning for the Blue Sox? Throw over to first. And again, Suki dives back in safely. McDonald struck out in his first at bat today. The runner is going this time. The throw down is not in time. It's a stolen base. And the first of the year for Michael Suki. Well, I told you when he beat a force out at first base, it, he didn't run all that well. He had a great jump off of Chris Powell there. Read it very, very well. It was a close play at second, but credit Suki with a stolen base, and he puts himself in scoring position. The 1-0 coming to McDonald now in an off-speed pitch. And swung on and missed. The count even. When you look at the start of last season for Adelaide, eerily similar. They dropped the first game of the year last year. Right here in Blacktown, 13-4. A similar scoreline to what we saw last night. And then followed that up with a couple of close games, but both close losses. The 1-1 called strike, now 1-2. It's a team that went on an absolute tear in January. Winning eight of their last nine. 
Just coming up a game short of their third consecutive ABL Championship Series, trying to get back there in 2018. <clears throat> the one two, missing off the plate of the fastball. The count even two balls, two strikes. And Chris Adamson taking over is not only a very great baseball mind, but he understands the Adelaide Bites. Been a player for the Bites. Been around the ABL. Called strike three of the outer edge. Good delivery there from Powell. And the inning comes to a close, but not before Michael Campbell drives in Jin D. Jung. Third run of the ball game for Sydney. They've got a one-run lead as we head to the fourth in Blacktown. This is Mookie Betts with the Red Sox, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. Here's to all of you early risers, go-getters, and should-be sleepers from all of us at Delta. Because the ones who truly change the world are the ones who can't wait to get out in it. It looks like you've built a lot of change from backing with us. Do you want to see the change? Yeah, that'd be good. Oh my God. <laughs> I'd like to thank you. The Bendigo Bank supplied a defib machine to the golf course. I died oh, wow. playing golf. The defib machine saved my life. That's so thank amazing. you. See the change your banking can make. Bendigo Bank. Be the change. This is Noah Syndergaard of the New York Mets, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. Well, remember, you don't have to wait in line at the box office for great Australian Baseball League tickets. You can order online today and save time at the gate. Visit the abl.com.au forward slash tickets and explore your options. You can also download the Baseball Live app from the App Store or Google Play. And new addition to the Baseball Live app is you can get your Australian Baseball League tickets right from the app. Many ways to buy tickets. Don't wait in line at the box office. That's that's old school. You can do it online and save time. Get right to your seats. Maybe get a chili dog or some widow's pizza if you're here at the ballpark and a cold one and sit down. Don't, don't worry about standing in line at the box office. Get those tickets online. Top of the fourth inning here in Blacktown. I say as Kiros is the man that leading things off, the right-hander. It'll be the six, seven, and eight spots in the Adelaide order due up here in the fourth. As they now find themselves in a 3-2 deficit. Kiros fouls that one back here toward us. And the count's now a ball and two strikes. Kiros singled in that first inning in which Adelaide put five consecutive runners aboard. They stranded the bases loaded in the first. Will that potentially come back to haunt them in this ball game? Sydney quickly pulled two back and they've since gotten one more to take a 3-2 lead. So he fouled off again. The count stays one and two. And now that we've got some of the technical gremlins worked out, be sure to hit us up on Twitter at hashtag ABL Bite Socks. Let us know where you might be watching from. If you've got any questions, I'll do my best to pretend to answer them. So this one is just off the plate, high and away. And the count now even two and two. Two two to Kiros and it's blown right by him. A strikeout for Clayton Freimuth. His fifth of the ball game and there's one gone here in the fourth inning. Well, I tell you what, he was shaky in the first after allowing those five consecutive hitters to reach base. He has really settled down. He's now retired eight straight, has struck out a total of five. It's a guy that could really be a wild card in the rotation 
for the Sydney Blue Sox. You can tell he's got an electric fastball. Only goes to the breaking stuff for the off-speed pitch when is really necessary. But we have tall, lanky left-hander. Stands about six foot five, 220 pounds. So there's plenty of him. Another fastball this time at the letters swung on and missed, and it's quickly 0-2. I'm impressed with what I've seen from the left-hander. In stark contrast to what we saw from the ageless Craig Anderson in the day's earlier game. Another fastball swung on and missed. Sixth strikeout of the night for Frymuth. And he's now retired the last nine straight. And Carl Hoschke potentially be the one to break the train. As right now, the lefty is doing as he pleases with these Adelaide hitters. First to Hoschke, and it's on the ground. Good pickup by Chang. Again, another phenomenal play at the hot corner. Boy, he's been good with the glove tonight. And another 1-2-3 inning for Freymuth in the Sydney defense. We go to the last of the fourth. Blue Sox looking good in Blacktown. This is Alex Bregman of the Houston Astros, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. Take me back to the third. a lot of change from banking with us mm. and I wondered if you wanted to see the change. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, one big moment. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> They've uh, sponsored us for around about $150,000. Wow. Thank you for banking at Bendigo Bank. Your support helps me to play netball with my friends. <laughs> see the change your banking can make. Bendigo Bank. Be the change. This is Corey Seeger with the Los Angeles Dodgers. You are watching the Australian Baseball League. Along with our producer, director from Digital Sports, Craig Abercrombie. My name's Andrew Reynolds. Glad to have you back with us in Blacktown. Good to have your company. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Now this is the third day of the Australian Baseball League season, and this is game three for both the Sydney Blue Sox and the Adelaide Bite. We'd love to take you on a trip around the Australian Baseball League and give you some scores, but there's only one ball game currently underway. Last of the fifth inning, Perth has pulled two back on Melbourne, and those two teams tied it to a piece. They're going to try and get two games in down at Melbourne Ballpark. It's been some crazy weather. Same can be said for up north in Brisbane, where they've not thrown a pitch yet today. They don't have the field for tomorrow. They're told that they cannot play baseball at Holloway tomorrow, so they needed to get both games in. They've already postponed one, hoping to at least play some baseball in Brisbane tonight. And we'll keep you updated on the status there, but here it's 3-2 Sydney. After Adelaide took a 2-0 lead in the top of the first, Sydney has scored three unanswered. And yeah, we'll look to pile on here in the fourth. Alex Howe takes a big cut at that off-speed pitch from Powell. And they count quickly, no balls and two strikes. Understand there's a large contingent of Adelaide Bite fans watching from the Akaba in Adelaide, and we say hello to you. They would be hoping for a few more runs from the away team. It's certainly still a long way to go in this baseball game as we play in the last of the fourth. The one, two, and how just gets a piece, fouling it off behind home plate. And we'll do it again at the ball in two strikes. I've been commented on the ground here at Blacktown tonight, but it does look phenomenal. I was in Brisbane for opening night. Holloway Field, which looks spectacular as well, but the ground really does look nice tonight in Sydney. The next to Howe, good off speed pitch here from Powell. And he is down on strikes, one gone here in the fourth inning. It's ever since February of 2016, which this park hosted the World Baseball Classic qualifier, is 
it's just gotten nicer and nicer. Of course, built in 2000 for the Sydney Olympic Games to be used as an auxiliary ground. Of course, Spotless Stadium, which is now the home to the GWS Giants, was the main baseball diamond where they played the gold medal game. Plenty of baseball was played on this field as well. And over the last 10, 15 years, there was some wear and tear to the ballpark. But I'll tell you what, baseball New South Wales, Major League Baseball, the Sydney Blue Sox have done a phenomenal job of upgrading this ballpark. It continues to get nicer and nicer. Here is a line shot in the left field off the bat of Eunice. Big turnaround first on his way to second, diving in. It's a one-out double. And the spark plug of the Sydney offense continues to do it, but he's down hurt. Oh, it looked like he was holding a hamstring. And he's smiling. It might just be a cramp. Boy, when you see somebody go down and grab at a right hamstring the way that Eunice did, we'll get another look at it here on the replay. When you see somebody grasp the hamstring, it's usually never a good sign. And sensing that, the Sydney coaching staff was out there very quickly. We'll get a look at it here. It's odd because he dove in hands first and then this is where it can yeah, definitely a cramp it looks like it just sort of caught him after he dove in good news for Eunice and the Blue Sox that he appears to be okay and now Trent Antonio will stand in and the first to Trent is a called strike there are a few elements of this ballpark that are obviously special beyond just the meaning of the World Baseball Classic qualifier that's where a lot of money was pumped into the park to certainly upgrade it. The long look from Powell and no one standing at second, but he'll force Eunice back to the bag. But there was obviously another very influential baseball event in 2014 at the Sydney Cricket Ground and the main netting behind home plate here at Blue Sox Stadium comes from the SCG. In that ball game in 2014 as here is a high fly ball into right plenty of room for Hoshki camp on an eight and oh he can't make the catch it was in shallow right field Hoshki never saw it the second baseman went out couldn't make the catch and everybody's safe man oh man what bad luck for the Adelaide bite. Off the bat, looked like the defense would have plenty of time. Hoshki never saw the baseball. Looked like neither did the second baseman. Oh, man. He's going from bad to worse here for Adelaide as it's now minute the quarters. It'll go as a single for Trent Antonio. And now the 41-year-old left-hander, Gavin Fingelson, with a chance to do some damage. He puts this one into right down the line, and it's fair. One run is in. D'Antonio on his way home. The throw is in time, but it didn't get him. pleading his case with the home plate umpire Bob Crawford. The same can now be said for Chris Adamson. As they thought they had D'Antonio dead to rights at home plate, the throw beat him there. But the tag a little bit late and the Sydney Blue Sox add two more and an RBI single from who else? Gavin Fingelson. And it's now a 5-2 lead. Blue Sox on top. Here you get a look at the base hit. Fingelson not doing anything fancy, just putting it down the right field line. We get a good look at this play at home. You see Kiro's calling for the baseball, slow it down. Yeah, it's a good call by Crawford. The hand just got underneath the tag of Kiro's, leading his case at all. The Blue Sox pick up another couple. Here's a swing and a miss from Jung.
been impressed with what I've seen from the Blue Sox. Got to say, there are a lot of folks that didn't seem to give this team much of a chance. It is still early. Obviously, a 40-game season is short, but it's still baseball. Teams can get hot and cold in an absolute hurry, but can you not be impressed with what you've seen from the Blue Sox so far? The offensive onslaught last night, the come from behind victory earlier today and now just capitalizing on opportunities got runners on base you got a veteran like Fingelson who didn't try to do too much just drives the ball into right field and good things happen to the tune of a 5-2 lead right now for the Blue Sox this one's tapped foul off toward the right side And on the flip side for Adelaide, there are a couple of pitches here and there from winning a ball game earlier today. One pitch in particular in this ball game, the home run to Jong back in the first inning. The little things in baseball that make all the difference. A throw behind the runner at second. Fingelson's back in safe. Jong, good off-speed pitch. Nice recovery by Powell as he gets the strikeout his second of the inning. And he needed that, the right-hander. Look at this pitch. Throws. Jim to Jong. First time they've kept him off base tonight. And Chi Sin Chang will stand him with two outs. Sydney team that's been left out of the finals well, since the 2013 season, 2013-14, when they went to Canberra, won a game in the preliminary final, and came here and dropped two consecutive. Or Canberra went to Perth and fell in two games in the championship series. Sydney has not been a part of the finals since then. It's certainly had chances. They've been in contention in the final round a couple of seasons. Three wins or a sweep, the opportunity to get in. This new format, new ABO finals format this year. The top four teams are in. The Blue Sox trying to make an appearance once again. In the ABL Finals, and I'll tell you what, what we've seen the first few days from them has been very, very good. Still nine rounds to go after this weekend, I understand that, but the Blue Sox might have themselves a solid squad. 2-1 instead of check on the runner at second base. Still remember, like yesterday, the last time Sydney was in the finals. You remember that ball game they played against Canberra in the first game of the preliminary final was a marathon. And Sydney wanted something like 19 to 12, and then the two teams had to back up here in Sydney the next night. And Keon Broxton hit a ground ball that could have tied the ball game in the ninth inning, and a controversial play at first extended that series, and the Cavalry won the next day. This one's popped up foul. And we'll do it again at two balls and two strikes. And Sydney was just a base hit away that season, potentially, from heading out west to play Perth for an ABLCS title. Instead, that call at first base doesn't go their way, and they've not been in the final since. Adelaide's been in the championship series two of the last three seasons. The 2-2. Two -two. On the ground, bouncing ball up the middle. They had him played perfectly. Ariaza behind the bag, throws on to first. 
And the inning is over, but Sydney, they add in two more. Gavin Fingleson drives in a pair of a one-out double. And we will head to the fifth inning in Blacktown. Sydney leading the bike 5-2. As you can see, we have three teams down here for the Waterbury and Toss, a fantastically strong night. This is a nice strong awesome game. Right, guys, ready to go? Start throwing, let's go. Happy to be here, guys. One step back for you guys, come on. Wall Street meets sport. Every team has a price on Sport Next. The 24-7 sports trading competition where fans can invest in sport on a whole new level. Make the right moves and you could conquer sport. Buy. Sell. Win. Sport Next. Conquer sports. Curtis Granderson with the New York Mets, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. Glad to have your company on a Saturday night in Sydney here on ABLTV.com, along with our producer-director, Craig Abercrombie. My name's Andrew Reynolds. Thanks for hanging out with us here on ABLTV.com. And be sure to hit that subscribe button, because BLK... The official on-field uniform provider of the Australian Baseball League. Well, what they're going to do is they're going to give away a jersey for every ABLTV.com broadcast this season. Well, what do you have to do? All you've got to do is simply click that subscribe button that's on your screen right now. Click it. And you'll have your opportunity to win one of four jerseys every week. The winners will be announced on Mondays, Australia time. And again, courtesy of BLK. No purchase necessary. Terms and conditions apply, but how easy is that? Just click subscribe. Here's a fly ball deep into left field. Quickly slamming on the brakes is how He makes the catch. And how about 11 in a row now retired by Clayton Frymuth, picking up right where he left off. He has been electric since that hiccup in the first inning. The Adelaide Bite have hit him hard a couple of times, but the defensive head is back. This is what Tony Harris said preseason in a nutshell. If we pitch well, if we play good defense, our offense will take care of it. We saw that earlier today. We have seen that through four-plus innings tonight. Turn the lineup over to Rodrigo Ariaza. He takes the first for a call strike. Ariaza's grounded out and struck out. He's 0 for 2 tonight. He was one for four with a double and a run scored in the earlier game today. Nothing in one, swung out and missed, and it's quickly 0-2. Well, just to finish the thought, again, BLK, who have been phenomenal partners to this point for the Australian Baseball League. See those flashy pink uniforms that they're providing tonight for the McGrath Foundation. Here's a base hit into right, and it breaks the string of 11 consecutive retired as Ariaza has his second hit of the day, his first here in game two. So that'll be a welcome sight for the Adelaide Bite, just getting a man on base against Frymuth, who's looked unhittable the last three innings. We'll see if the Bite can string some hits together here. Darius Day will stand in. He struck out a pair of times against this lefty. Well, it wouldn't be easy to hit as a left-handed hitter. And there aren't many metrics on Clayton Friday, the guy who sort of came out of Division II college ball and has spent some time in Germany playing. There wouldn't be a lot of metrics on it, but you can just tell by the way he throws. He's very lengthy, and his delivery is more three-quarter than it is over the top. As the ball sort of comes from behind the left-hander, you get a really good look at it on your picture here, just imagine standing in the box and being Darius Day and having to try to hit this. <laughs> 
2 0 to the lefty. This one missing just a little bit low. Now three balls and no strikes. Stephen Lohr awaits on deck. He's already singled and scored tonight. And the bite led 2 0 after a half inning. Sydney pulled those two runs back quickly on a two run shot from Jindy Zhang. And the bite crawl their way back into this one, taking all the way on 3 0. And Darius Day watches a called strike. Now 3 and 1. You wonder how long Frymuth can go. He's creeping up toward the mid 70s in terms of pitch counts. As this one's fouled straight back. Likely see one more inning from Powell if Adamson elects to. Run him back out for the fifth inning. He's thrown 69 pitches through four. And the next from Frymuth will be his 72nd. And it's fouled off again behind home plate. And the count will remain three balls, two strikes. Here you see his numbers tonight six strikeouts, that 415 earned run average, indicative of the fact that. Allowed a couple of runs in the first. Looking for strikeout number seven. Instead, he'll check on the runner at first. Another 3-2 today. Good at bat by Darius Day. Very patient plate appearance as he takes his base. It's exactly what Adelaide needed. They get the lead off or the single with one out. Darius Day, very patient at bat against a left-hander who had struck him out a pair of times tonight. He draws the walk. And Adelaide, who had seen 11 consecutive hitters be shut down all of a sudden, they've got the tying run of the plate and the form of Stephen Lohr. See what Lohr can do with two on. He tried to check his swing on an off-speed pitch. We haven't seen many of those from Frymuth. Nothing in one, inside out into right, falling quickly, a base hit. Heading home is Ariaza, the throw not in time, and the bite have pulled one back. It's an RBI single for Stephen Lohr. The bite pushed their third run across. And it's now a five to three ball game here in the top of the fifth inning. A solid relay from right field and Michael Suki. But the speed of Rodrigo Ariaza was very much on display there. And now look who struts to the plate. Chang Tai Shan with a chance to give his team the lead. Boy, would this be a big spot for his first ABL long ball. First two of them in there for a called strike. It's a man who hit over 300 in his CPBL career. Would this be a time for number one as a member of the Adelaide Bite? They would be dancing in the streets of Taiwan. The nothing and one. Low. Well blocked behind home plate by Jung, and the count's even a ball to strike. Singled in the first, drove in one of Adelaide's two runs. It was his first base hit of his ABL career. First base hit and his first run driven in. Four ducks on the pond for the right-hander here. The 1-1. One -one. Swung out and missed. Boy, really fooled on the off-speed pitch there. Now he's in the hole one and two. spot in this ball game. A ball and two strikes on Chang and he swings and misses. Big, big strikeout for Freimuth. 
his seventh of the ball game, and there's two gone here in the fifth. Get a load of this. It was just heat. He said, if you can catch up, be my guest. Chang couldn't. And Clayton Freimuth. Ice water in his veins. Gets his seventh strikeout. It's not a pitch that a lot of pitchers would try against a hitter like Tyshawn Chang. But he threw him a fastball at the letters and got away with it. Here's Angus Roger now. The last hope in the inning for Adelaide. He takes a called strike. Boy, it's going to be fun to watch Tyson Chang in some of those high leverage spots this season. He takes a big cut. The left handed pitcher just got the better of him in that instance. Nothing in one, and so they'll check back on the runner at second base. Day's able to scamper in quickly. Prime Youth trying to get through the fifth and give himself an opportunity to win the ball game. The 0-1. Inside, out and right side through the hole, a base hit. They're sending Day. It's going to be a play at the plate instead. Cut off. The throw goes to second. And we've got a one-run ball game in Blacktown. The throw was cut off by Fingles in its second. They had no chance to get the speedy Darius Day, and it's now a 5-4 ball game, a two-run inning to this point for Adelaide. Looked like an inside pitch that he hit off the hands and just snuck it through the hole on the right side. And here come the Adelaide Bite. I say a key rose now with a base hit already tonight, singled in the first. Takes the initial offering for a cold strike. The 0 1 is popped up. Into right, Suki toward the track. He makes the catch. And the inning is over with the Adelaide bite. They pull two back, an RBI single from Stephen Lorne. Two out RBI from Angus Roger. We go to the last of the fifth inning. Good ball game tonight. Sydney leading Adelaide 5-4. This is Anthony Rizzo with the Chicago Cubs, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. Take your game to the next level with Black Chrome Custom Compression. Improve your performance with increased power. Train harder and faster. Maximize your recovery with increased blood flow. Show your true colors with Black Chrome. This is Max Scherzer with the Washington Nationals, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. Fun ball game to this point. Thanks for hanging out with us on ADLTV.com. Don't forget that you can get more than just live games here at ADLTV.com. Game replays, highlights, feature stories, and much, much more. Be sure to subscribe today at ADLTV.com. And as mentioned a couple of things ago, if you do hit that subscribe button, an opportunity to win an ADL jersey of your choice, courtesy of BLK, the on-field uniform provider partner, partnering with ADLTV.com to give away one jersey for every broadcast this season.
but you've got to subscribe to win, so be sure to press that subscribe button on ABLTV.com. Sit back, enjoy the baseball, and have your chance to win, courtesy of BLK. Chris Powell sent back out to the mound by Chris Adamson. Powell to this point tonight, 69 pitches through four innings, seven hits, five runs, all earned. He has struck out four and walked three and allowed that one home run to Jindy Zhang. He's trying to settle himself, though, the right hander. He's the guy that was pitching in double A just a couple of years ago for the Tulsa Drillers. They were taken over as a Los Angeles Dodgers farm team. They were Colorado Rockies affiliate for so many years. The 1 0 missing low and away, two balls and no strikes. Matter of fact, one of the ABL favorite imports, you could say, and Joey Wong, who has not come out this year. He's just had a young baby born not long ago, Joey Wong, but he spent a lot of time with the Tulsa Drillers as well. And that was, of course, when they were. An affiliate of the Colorado Rockies. Wong still playing in the Texas League, though, this past season with Seattle Mariners affiliate, the Arkansas Travelers. <laughs> two on to Suki. This one's in there for a called strike. The count even at two balls and two strikes. It's five, six, and seven in the order for Sydney. Suki Campbell and Connor McDonald. Alex Howe will hit if anyone reaches. In what has been a topsy-turvy back-and-forth contest through four-and-a-half tonight. The 2-2. This one hammered into center. Day draws a bead, and he's able to get there to make the catch for the first down of the inning. Well, we've not talked a lot about it. And probably my fault. We had some technical difficulties earlier, but as many of you know, earlier in the week, the Australian Baseball League, Baseball Australia, announced the impending expansion of the ABL from six teams to eight teams next year. And this is going to take place in the 2018-19 ABL season. And as exciting as this league has been, as exciting as it is sure to be this season, the prospect of what's on the horizon for baseball in this country is very, very exciting. It's something that I'm certainly looking forward to. I know that many fans of Australian baseball and international baseball in general are looking forward to. There's a ground ball to first base. Just fair. McArdle picks it up, steps on the bag, and there's two gone. But news coming from the ABL head office this week is... The phone was ringing off the hook. I know Ben Foster had a conversation with Chris Coleman on the ABL TV broadcast on Thursday night. And he said, really, from the announcement time on Monday morning, he's fielded a lot of phone calls. Surely Cam Vell, the chief executive officer of Baseball Australia, has been having conversations. Know that he recently traveled to Asia as well. He's, these are all free-flowing conversations. They put it out there and said, you know what? We're going to expand. We're going to have eight teams. We don't know where those eight teams are going to be located. The ground ball to third. This will be a tough play. And it's underneath the glove. Could go for extra bases. McDonald on his way to second. He'll pull up there with ease. It's a two-out double for Connor McDonald. His first hit of the ball game. And his second hit of the doubleheader. He's in scoring position with two gone. He'll extend the inning to Alex Howe. But what Baseball Australia and the ABL have done is essentially open it up and say, look, if you want an opportunity to own a sports franchise in an exciting up-and-coming sport market in this country, let us know. ABL will field plenty of business plans, I'm sure, in the coming months. And it opens up the pool for lots of different types of owners, be it conglomerates, single parties. It also opens up many different locations for baseball teams throughout this country and potentially abroad. It's very exciting, the future of the Australian Baseball Leagues. The 1-0 is on the outer part of the plate. The count even a ball and a strike. Well, there's an article that came out of New Zealand a couple of days ago. New Zealand throwing their hand up, saying they'd love to have a team. Cam Vale even speaking on radio a couple of days ago in New Zealand. The 1-1 just off the plate outside. Two balls and a strike. 
And it's a stark contrast. If you remember just six months ago when the Australian Sporting Commission came out and said that there was a spending freeze and baseball would not receive any more money, there were, there were many people that were worried in this country. The 2-1 is tapped at home play. That looked like it got Howe on the foot. Well, that's no fun. He's... They had lost feeling in it momentarily as you see him driving it into the ground. People that were worried in this Get another look at it here with a replay. Oh, yeah, just off the top of his right foot. Two, one is tapped in hole. Looks to be okay. We've had some potential injuries tonight, have we not? A couple of comebackers to pitchers. Jacob Eunice seemingly pulling his hamstring at second base, only to come up with a cramp. And now Alex Howe fouling one off his foot. This one is tapped into the glove. No, says the home plate umpire. Bob Crawford said it hit the ground first. Kiros didn't think so. The Adelaide catcher we will do it again at two and two. But it is a contrast. There were a lot of people that were worried. People within baseball, fans of baseball that were worried that there was a funding freeze and in baseball they weren't receiving any more funds to potentially pursue an Olympic dream. It left a lot of people scratching their heads wondering what the future of baseball is. Well, I think Cam Vale and Ben Foster and everyone at the ABL office and the Baseball Australia team have They've shown what the future of baseball is, and it's very exciting. The 2-2 from Howe is hammered. Deep in the right field, it's sending Hoski back to the track. He reaches up and makes the catch in front of the Blacktown sign to retire the side. Howe gave it a ride, but it was only warning track power. The Blue Sox strand a man at second. We're through five. Fun ball game tonight. Sydney leading Adelaide 5-4. This is Mookie Betts with the Red Sox, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. Here's to all of you early risers, go-getters, and should-be sleepers from all of us at Delta. Because the ones who truly change the world are the ones who can't wait to get out in it. It looks like you've built a lot of change from backing with us. Do you want to see the change? Yeah, that'd be good. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'd like to thank you. The Bendigo Bank supplied a defib machine to the golf course. I died. Oh wow! Well. Playing golf, the defib machine saved my life. That's so thank amazing. you. See the change your banking can make. Bendigo Bank, be the change. This is Noah Syndergaard of the New York Mets, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. Andrew Reynolds back with you in Blacktown. Thanks for hanging out tonight with us on ABLTV.com. A reminder, ABLTV broadcasts do not end tonight for round one. We will be in Melbourne tomorrow on ABLTV.com. Chris Garagiola and very likely Dan Vaughn will have the call for you tomorrow afternoon. It's a one o'clock start. In Melbourne tomorrow, our final game of the weekend on ABLTV.com. But still got a good game on our hands here. As we've got a new pitcher into the ball game for Sydney. We'll tell you about that in a moment. First, we'll tell you about Sport Next. Wall Street meet baseball. Sport Next, the new 24-7 sport trading competition that lets you see what your team is worth. You can sign up for free at sportnext.com. I tell you what, there were a few of us that hopped on Sport Next yesterday afternoon and sort of got to trading. If you've ever sort of played in the stock market or looked around at stocks, it's very much like that. And a few of us in the office yesterday sort of jumped on Sport Next, who's currently in their beta testing phase, and we had a bit of fun. You should download it for free yourself. Head to sportnext.com. Here's a fly ball to center. And the first pitch of the inning to Jordan McCardle. 
And Campbell has it. There's one pitch and one out. And the new pitcher is Cheng Sung Ko. First time that we've seen Ko. And did not appear for Sydney in last night's ball game. Did not appear in the first game of the doubleheader. So the first time that we're getting to see is 32-year-old right-hander. And you can't get much more efficient. One pitch, one out as Jordan McCardle went after the first pitch that he saw. And now the first to Hoshke is in for a called strike. So you can close the book now on Clayton Frymuth, the starting pitcher for Sydney. This one taken off the plate outside. Final line on Frymuth, five innings, seven hits, four runs, all earned. He struck out seven and walked two. And in and amongst that, at one point, retired 11 straight. 1-1 one -one to Hoshke off the plate outside. Two balls and a strike. He can be the winner. He cannot be the loser. A little labor to get through the end of that fifth inning where he allowed a couple of runs, but by getting through the fifth, Tony Harris has allowed his tall left-hander to be the winning pitcher if Sidney can hang on. 3-1, or 2-1 missing low. Now three balls and a straight. As Connor O'Gorman, the nine-hole hitting second baseman, awaits on deck. Looks like Den DeJong needs a replacement to his catcher's mitt. Looks like he's got it now. The import catcher, Din Jijang, wasn't happy with it when he strutted over to the dugout. Looks like he's taken care of it. Hoshke swings at the 3-1. Now a straight back. It's now a full count. Been a rough go of things today for Carl Hoshke. He struck out a total of three times over the two ball games. Did walk and score one of the three runs for Adelaide in the first game of the day. The payoff to him here, inside outed toward left. It's dying quickly, but Howe makes the catch. And there's two outs. This is where Sydney can also be pretty tough. We'll get another look at it here. Hoshke went down to get this ball. It was slicing in left field and dying very quickly, but Al was playing relatively shallow in left, was able to make the catch. The first here to O'Gorman, missing low for ball number one. They certainly have a good pitching staff. This Blue Sox club, you talk about a guy like Sven Schuler, who can pitch at the back end of games. Todd Van Steensel is not playing this weekend, but we'll certainly see him as the season progresses. Josh Geyer, who's represented Australia in the World Baseball Class. There's a lot of arms in this bullpen that can make Sydney a very, very good team. If they can score runs, if they can play defense, which are the two things that Tony Harris has outlined, he didn't even want to talk about offense in the preseason. He said, if we pitch well and we back our pitchers up, our offense is going to score runs. They scored them last night in bunches. They scored just enough to squeak past Adelaide in game one, and they find themselves in a 5-4 lead in the last of the fifth inning here. This could be a fun year for the Blue Sox, and certainly the faithful have been waiting a few seasons for that. I mentioned a few innings back that it's been since the 2013-14 season that we've even seen the Blue Sox in the finals. Here's a ground ball to third. Good pick up again by Chang. Boy, how good is he over there? One, two, three inning. The Blue Sox continue to roll. We go to the last of the sixth. The home team leading it by one. This is Alex Bregman of the Houston Astros, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. Take me back to the third. Up 
a lot of change from banking with us, mm. and I wondered if you wanted to see the change. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay, one be a moment. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> They've sponsored us for around about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Thank you for banking at Bendigo Bank. Your support helps me to play netball with my friends. <laughs> See the change your banking can make. Bendigo Bank. Be the change. This is Corey Seager with the Los Angeles Dodgers. You are watching the Australian Baseball League. <laughs> To the last of the sixth inning we go in Sydney. It's been a fun ball game tonight. Five to four, the home team leading the Adelaide Bite. And what is their third game of this series? They will play the final contest tomorrow afternoon. We'll take a quick look around the other scores in the Australian Baseball League. Perth and Melbourne are playing the second game of their series. They got underway pretty late tonight. It's, it's rained. And they kept it from getting underway on time, and then once they did get underway, they were delayed for quite some time. The Perth leading that game 5-3 to three in the top of the seventh. And Canberra in Brisbane, they've been hit even harder with weather up in Brisbane. The Bandits have won the first two games of that series. But they have not thrown a pitch at Holloway Field so far today. They already postponed the first game of the night. They're trying to get at least one in, but it looks like they have yet to commence so the only other ball game going concurrently to our abltv.com broadcast is perth and melbourne the heat leading the aces in the top of the seventh five to three jacob Eunice leading things off here in the sixth inning for sydney's one for two tonight rounded out to third in the second doubled and scored in the fourth inning that to this point is the difference in the ball game. Sydney leading it by a run. This one has popped into right field. Quickly coming on as Hoshke makes the catch. And there's one out in the inning. We talked a bit about expansion of the Australian Baseball League a couple of innings ago. I mentioned that there were many in the baseball community here in Australia that were concerned six months ago about what the future of baseball was, especially with the national team. Lack of an increase in funding from the Sports Commission. This one's fielded on a hop by McCardle. He'll step on the back for the second out of the inning. The other piece to the puzzle for baseball in this country is the Australian national team. And obviously there's the Olympic Games looming in Tokyo in 2020. We know the Japanese team will be a part of that. What the WBSC and the IOC have yet to announce is what other teams will be a part of the Olympic competition. There are many that say it'll probably only be a 16 competition. Australia currently seventh in the WBSC world rankings. You'd have to think it would be hard for Australia to get into a six-team competition. But they're going to try. They have announced they'll play a few international series in the lead-up to the Olympics in the 2019 Premier 12. There's a good chance that the winner of that Premier 12 in 2019 will get an automatic berth into the Olympic Games. So that's one way to qualify, just to ensure that you win that tournament. So ground ball shot foul off toward the right side. Bengelson tonight is one for two with a pair of RBIs. Those came a couple of innings ago to give the Blue Sox their fourth and fifth runs of the night. This ball is swung on and missed. Kiros has to corral it and just does get it to first base in time. And the side is retired in order. Good work by Nathan Vanderlinden in his first inning of relief. We go to the seventh inning. It's getting late in Blacktown. Five to four, Blue Sox lead. This is Marcus Stroman with the Toronto Blue Jays, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. Wall Street meets sport. Every team has a price on Sportnext, the 24-7 sports trading competition where fans can invest in sport on a whole new level. Make the right moves, and you could conquer sport. Buy. Sell. Win. Sportnext. Conquer sports.
is Curtis Granderson with the New York Mets, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. Darwin Nash, running across the diamond, past his game, he's done and dusted. Top of the seventh inning in Sydney at Blacktown International Sports Park. A beautiful day that we weren't sure we would get after several days of hearing that Saturday would just be one giant rainstorm in Sydney and the surrounding areas. It really hasn't come. It's sort of been threatening to drizzle throughout the day, but all in all, we've gotten ourselves a fantastic mid-spring afternoon and evening that has continued into the night. We'll remind you, you can sign up for the ABL's official e-newsletter, The Rundown, for stories, features, previews, predictions, and much, much more. Just head to the abl.com.au and sign up for The Rundown today. Folks at the abl.com.au doing a lot of new inventive things with The Rundown this season. It's good publication as this one has popped up foul on the first offering. Ariaza was taking no prisoners. He was trying to plant one. With the second diamond well beyond that right field fence. It'll be the top of the order for Adelaide. Trailing now by just a run. 5-4 as we play here in the seventh. The next two, Ariaza. Takes a called strike, and he's quickly in the hole. Nothing in two. Grounded out in the first. Struck out in the second. Singled and scored. An inning to go in the fifth. The 0-2 from Coe. Off the end of the bat, but through the hole of base hit. Second of the night for Ariaza. And the bite of the leadoff man aboard here in the seventh. The potential tying run. This little hug there to Connor McDonald from Rodrigo Ariaza. Just letting him know he's there. So now Darius Day will stand in. He struck out a pair of times and walked tonight. We'll check on the runner over at first. Well, there's not much of him, Rodrigo Ariaza. He's not a large guy by any stretch of the imagination. But he is very quick. They will certainly... Keep an eye on him over there at first base. It's the next coming to Darius Day, missing high and away. And the count's 1-0. Oh. Saw that speed of Ariaza on display in the earlier game today. When he scored from second base on a base hit from Darius Day. They would love to replicate that here in the seventh inning of game two and tie this thing up. This ball was swung on and missed. Light scored twice in the first. Twice again in the fifth inning. They have the leadoff man aboard here in the seventh. The next off the plate outside. And the count now two and one. A lot of international flavor on this Adelaide Bike team. Darius Day, of course, one of those. A Texas Rangers farmhand at 23 years of age. The 2-1 missing just high. Now three balls and a strike. His teammate and counterpart at the top of the order. Rodrigo Arias at first. An MLB prospect as well. The 3-0, 3, -oh, three -one today, and he swings and misses. Bit of an off-speed delivery there from Coe. I don't want him to count full. Three balls and two strikes. They've got Ayarza listed at five foot eight, 145 pounds. I assume that he wasn't 
big in stature. You can tell. You can tell that now. Connor McDonald, who's standing at first, is a big guy. It's a bit like those shots you've seen of middle infielders standing next to Jose Altuve. Runner is going. Won't matter. It's ball four. This one gets away. Ayarza going to third. He will stand right there and. Boy, this is the inning for the Adelaide Bite. Runners at the corners at the top of the order, nobody out. And the big bats looming. The first will be Stephen Lohr, the right-hand swinger. Let's have a look at it here. It was ball four, so the throw didn't even need to be made. They overthrow the shortstop in Eunice. Gets by Fingles in at second base, and that allows Ayarza to reach third without contest. Well, and you wonder how crafty Chris Adamson wants to be here. You've got maybe one of the fastest guys in the Australian Baseball League standing at third. Do you even entertain a potential safety squeeze here? Runners going from second. They will throw and got him. Boy, did Jin D. Jang not need much time to redeem himself. Darius Day gunned down at second base. Ayarza stayed put at third, and that changes the complexion of the inning. So he did try to get crafty, Adamson. It's just not in the way that I hypothesized that he might. The 1-0 taken off the plate. Two balls, no strikes. Loris had a good night. He's singled a pair of times. He's driven in a run. He's also scored one. He's been a part of two of the four that Adelaide have pushed across the plate. And the two O's popped up. Shallow right center. Who wants it? The second baseman is called off by Suki, who makes the catch. And Ayarza is going to have to stay put once again at third. An inning that started with so much promise after a single. A walk and an error on the catcher. Minute the corners, nobody out has turned into a man at third, two outs. And the inning is now in the hands of the CPBL legend, Chang Tai Shan. Has singled in a run tonight. Has one base hit in his first three ABL games. The first to him. Hit back up the middle. Will be a tough play for Eunice. He fields, throws across, and the inning's over. <laughs> Phenomenal work by Cheng Sung Ko. Pitching out of a jam. Runners at the corners. Nobody out. We go to the last of the seventh. Time to stretch in Sydney. The Blue Sox leading at 5-4. This is Anthony Rizzo with the Chicago Cubs, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. Take your game to the next level with Black Chrome Custom Compression. Improve your performance with increased power. Train harder and faster. Maximize your recovery with increased blood flow. Show your true colors with black chrome. This is Max Scherzer with the Washington Nationals, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. Bottom of the seventh inning in Sydney, the Blue Sox leading the Adelaide Bite five to four. White jumped out to a 2-0 lead in the first. Sydney tied it in the first inning. That's the only lead that Adelaide have had here in game number two. They dropped a heartbreaker earlier today to Sydney. 
The Mike trying to hang in at a golden opportunity there in the top of the seventh inning to tie or take the lead, but couldn't do it. The Sydney come back to the plate, middle of their order here in the seventh, three, four, five. Jong is the first man to the plate. He takes a called strike. As Chris Burkholder comes back out for his second inning of work, called him Nathan Vanderland in last inning. That was incorrect. It, in fact, is Chris Burkholder who had a 1-2-3 last half of the sixth inning. Burkholder continues to work quickly as he did an inning ago. He's a phenomenal story. A guy that would remind you a bit, not necessarily in stature in the way that he pitches, but story-wise of Max McNabb, who played for the Adelaide Bite last year. This ball is hit back to the pitcher. Burke Holder will take it to the bag himself, and there's one gone. Well, you don't write one unassisted into the scorebook all that often, but Burke Holder, who's halfway there when he fielded it, said, might as well just go step on the bag. And Zhang is retired for the first out here in the seventh. It'll bring in Chai Sing Chang. It was one for three tonight. Well, Burke Holder was just sort of hanging around the Adelaide Bite office in West Beach. And come in to do some work for the Adelaide Bite in Baseball South Australia. Word got out that he had a pretty good right arm. So he started to train a bit with the Bite early days when... The Australians were all here, began training before the imports came out. Chris Adamson liked what he saw, put him on the roster, and here he is. Much like Rodrigo Ayarza, there's not much of him. Here he allows a base hit his first of the night. Chai Sin Chang gets his second on a one-out single in the left. There's not much of Chris Burkholder, only 80 kilos, 175 centimeters tall. They liked what he saw in training, did Chris Adamson, put him on the roster. It was, it was a bit of a tip around that we would probably see him tonight. They expect him to be a main piece in this bullpen. First offering to right-handed swing, Michael Suki taken low. Suki has been aboard a pair of times tonight, one of those on a force out. He's one for three. It's those types of stories that make you fall in love with not only baseball, but the Australian Baseball League in particular. And a few of those moments in Brisbane, a game that I called with Chris Coleman a few nights ago on Thursday night, opening night at Holloway Field. This is the next from Burke Holder. This one just narrowly missing Suki. And the count's even a ball and a strike. It's the potential to see young players, guys who uh, three or four months ago maybe didn't even think that they would be pitching in the Australian Baseball League, throwing against former big leaguers, pros, both in North America and Asia. It's something you don't see in many baseball leagues around the world. We saw a young 18-year-old for the Cavalry throwing against Donald Lutz, a former big leaguer on... Thursday night, getting to see young Chris Burkholder throw for the Adelaide Bite tonight. It's Michael Suki was able to hold up his swing there. The count now three balls and a strike. And the same can be said for Jack O'Loughlin, although that he's an affiliated player now. Still very, very young. We saw him start the first game of the doubleheader for Adelaide. But there's so many good stories and so many unconventional matchups that you see in the ABL that Make this such a great lead. Suki draws ball four. A bit of a bat flip as well. I'm sure what he wasn't happy about, but he wasn't happy about something after that ball four call. So Kiros is going to go out and have a conversation with Burkholder. And so too is Chris Adamson. The entire infield, it looks like, is going to converge and have a chat. And you can Tell me that shot there that Chris Adamson sort of towers over the young pitcher in Burke Holders. There's not much of him, of him standing 175 kilos, but a lot of people look in the Adelaide Bite circles that really like what they've seen from him. 
And by virtue of leaving him in in a spot like this, you sort of sense that from Chris Adamson as well. This is a spot where he could go to the bullpen. Again, there's no Luke Van Mill this weekend for Adelaide. He's still in the Netherlands. Although he's on the roster, he is not available for Adelaide this weekend. Not that you'd go to him in the seventh inning, you might close her, but Chris Adamson has to keep that in mind, the way that he structures his bullpen. He elects to leave the right-hander in, showing the amount of faith that he has in him. Michael Campbell swinging first pitch, flies it into left. Roger ranging back, he makes the catch. And there's two outs in the inning. And it's these types of spots, I don't care if you're a young pitcher or a young hitter, high leverage spots that you're sort of just thrown into early in a season. And Burkholder, a young man who came out and thought that he might just help around the park with the Adelaide fight, not necessarily pitch. Maybe be young enough and just fresh enough in this league to not really understand the magnitude of the situation that he's currently in with two on and two outs and a tight ball game and his club looking for their first win of the season. Just go out and pitch. It's the old Billy Chapel saying from for love of the game, clear the mechanism. Good offering here on the first pitch to Connor McDonald for strike one. Looking ahead to the Adelaide by eighth inning, they will have the five, six, and seven men. Rozier, Kiros, and Jordan McCardle. And a prime opportunity last half inning to draw even, but couldn't do it. Blue Sox still leading it by a run. Here's a called strike, now nothing in two. McDonald has struck out a pair of times. He's also doubled one for three tonight. And the 0-2 from Burkholder swung out and missed. Gets away from Kiros. He'll throw down. And that'll end the inning. Solid work from Chris Burkholder through his second inning of work on in relief of Chris Powell. We go to the eighth inning of Blacktown. 5-4, Sydney on top. This is Mookie Betts with the Red Sox, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. Here's to all of you early risers, go-getters, and should-be sleepers from all of us at Delta. Because the ones who truly change the world are the ones who can't wait to get out in it. It looks like you've built a lot of change from backing with us. Do you want to see the change? Yeah, that'd be good. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'd like to thank you. The Bendigo Bank supplied a defib machine to the golf course. I died oh, wow. playing <laughs> golf. The defib machine saved my life. That's so thank amazing. you. See the change your banking can make. Bendigo Bank. Be the change. This is Noah Syndergaard of the New York Mets, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. for Sydney, he will be back sooner rather than later you'd have to think but obviously a long minor league season for Todd so he's taking a bit of time before he makes his way back into the Sydney bullpen but he'd be liking what he sees that's for sure as his team leads 5-4 a chance to win their first three ball games of the season There's still plenty of baseball left to be played. Angus Roger finding himself in a nothing in two hole. He 
Roger Keyrose and Jordan McCardle, the three do ups for Adelaide here in the eighth. As Cheng Sung Ko goes back to work, and I think it's Roger was going to work, hammers this ball toward the Adelaide bullpen and into the beer garden. Looks like everyone's okay down there. That ball was absolutely crushed. Roger looking for his third base hit tonight. He's been aboard a pair of times, has yet to score. The bite put the leadoff man aboard last inning, couldn't do anything with it. Nothing in two, so just high, count of ball on two strikes. The next to Roger called strike three. The right hand went up quickly of Bob Crawford. First strikeout for Cole. Very well located pitch on one and two. Get a load of this. Just painted the black on the outer part of the plate. And there's one gone here in the eighth inning. I say as Kiros will stand in now. The starting catcher, the right handed swinger, takes a called strike. Kiro single to the first. He struck out and flied out to right. Adelaide looking for any kind of base runner they can get. Here is a high fly ball into center field. It'll take forever for this to come down. Campbell <laughs> tracks it down and makes the catch. That was a big league fly ball if I've ever seen one into center. But a long loud one. Kiro has retired. Two gone here in the eighth. So Chang Sung Ko tried to complete his third scoreless frame on in relief of Clayton Frymuth, who's still on track to get the win in this ballgame. His first to Jordan McCardle, missing off the plate outside. One ball, no strike. McCardle 0 for 2 with a walk tonight. Swing and a miss on an off-speed pitch here, and the count's even 1-1. One one. He's played a good first base over there, Jordan McCardle. Been impressed with what I've seen from him. Another one of the youngsters on this Adelaide squad. Was hitting a grand slam at West Beach last year. The first grand slam that that ballpark ever saw. He's quickly becoming one of the crowd favorites there in Adelaide. You can understand that. He, he and Jack O'Loughlin, the young core of this team. A couple of guys that could be around for a long, long time in Adelaide uniforms. The one two to McCardle, swung on and missed. Quick inning of work for Cheng Sung Ko. Strikes out the side in order. We go to the last of the eighth inning in Blacktown here on ABLTV.com. This is Alex Bregman of the Houston Astros, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. a lot of change from banking with us mm. and I wondered if you wanted to see the change. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, one be moment. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> They've sponsored us for around about hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Wow. Thank you for banking at Bendigo Bank. Your support helps me to play netball with my friends. <laughs> see the change your banking can make. Bendigo Bank. Be the change. This is Corey Seeger with the Los Angeles Dodgers. You are watching the Australian Baseball League. The 
And don't forget, our next ABL TV broadcast will come your way tomorrow afternoon as the Melbourne Aces and the Perth Heat will play what is likely to be the fourth game of that series. They have just finished in Melbourne as pretty dramatic fashion. The Melbourne Ace is actually winning the ball game 6-5. to five. They will be our ABL TV broadcast tomorrow night. Walking off, Liam Bedford doubling. In the final stages of that game, in the bottom of the eighth inning, it was only scheduled to be a seven-run ball game. It went eight. The first game of the doubleheader, Liam Bedford doubles in Brett Cumberland. And the Aces have won their first ball game of the season. Here's a ground ball to McCardle off the McCardle rather off the bat of Alex Howe. He underhands to the pitcher for the first down of the inning. And again, you can join Chris Garagiola, Dan Vaughn tomorrow afternoon. Matinee baseball from Melbourne Ballpark, the home of the ABLCS from last year. Be good to see the Aces and Perth Heat in action for the first time at ABLTV.com. Again, that's tomorrow afternoon. Australian time, a 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time start. It'll be easy for the folks in North America. An opportunity to watch that game on your Saturday evening. And this ball is popped up to the pitcher. Burkholder, pretty athletic play, leaps off the mound, makes the catch. And there are quickly two gone here in the eighth for Trent Antonio. Get another look at it here. He's falling off the mound, Burkholder. Fielding his position very well. I'm impressed with what I've seen from Chris Burkholder. I mean, I made it sound like he appeared from out of nowhere. He has been pitching state league in the South Australian Baseball League. Pitching for the Glenelg Tigers. But as far as the biter concerned, and Chris Adamson is concerned, he, he wasn't necessarily on... An ABL roster radar he's sort of come from out of nowhere in that aspect, but if he continues to pitch this way, he's going to get the ball more and more. Nothing in one, missing high, one ball, one strike. And a fly ball into center. Day is there with room. And the inning is over. Well, it's getting late for the Adelaide by one last chance. They'll have the eight, nine, and one spots in the order do up. Can they draw even or take the lead? We'll find out after this on ABLTV.com. This is Marcus Stroman with the Toronto Blue Jays, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. Wall Street meets sport. Every team has a price on Sportnet. The 24-7 sports trading competition where fans can invest in sport on a whole new level. Make the right moves and you could conquer sport. Buy, sell, win. Sportnext. Conquer sports. Curtis Granderson with the New York Mets, and you're watching the Australian Baseball League. Well, we wondered who it would be at the back end of games for Sydney. Uh, wonder no more. Sven Schuler is coming out of the bullpen. He will take over for Cheng Sung Ko, who is phenomenal in three innings on a relief with Clayton Frymuth, who is in line to get the win if that man on your screen Sven Schuler can close things out for the Sydney Blue Sox he will face Hoshki O'Gorman and Ayarza if anyone's able to reach base Darius Day 8-9 and 1 in the order for the Adelaide Bite they've had their chances here in game two most notably back in the seventh inning when they had the first two on men at the corners nobody out couldn't make good of it and they've got one more chance 
Against the Sydney Blue Sox closer. One more time to remind you, don't miss tomorrow's ABL TV broadcast at 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. The Sydney Blue Sox, rather the Adelaide, uh, Melbourne Aces, I should say, taking on the Perth Heat in that ball game. So Sven Schuler on for the first time this season. And his first offering to Carl Hoschke is in there for a called strike. And it'll be Hoschke, O'Gorman, and Rodrigo Ayarza. Schuler playing in his second Australian Baseball League season. Made 14 appearances last year for the Sydney Blue Sox. Not many of those in save situations. He did have one save and two opportunities. His 16 innings pitched. He was more of a spot pitcher for Jason Pospisil last year, but Tony Harris has thrown him into the fire, giving him the closer's role, at least for tonight. And the 2-1 to Hoshke in there for a cold strike. Count even 2-2. Two and two. Here's a chopper to short. Eunice is there. Long throw, and they just get Carl Hosky, who was motoring down the line. Close play at first. Punched out by Jordan Taylor. One gone. Man, oh man, oh man, was this close. A good look at it here. Boy, bang, bang at first, but I think Jordan Taylor got it right. That's not an easy play for a first base umpire. Here's Counter O'Gorman hitting with one out, nobody on, and the first to him is a called strike. O'Gorman is. Flight out three times tonight. It was a pop out to first back in the second inning. He's also flight out to left. And to third base in the sixth inning. 0 for 3 tonight. 0 for 6 all up in the two games of the doubleheader. This one's high and tight. So Gorman ducking out of the way. Now 1 and 2. These two teams will play game four of this series tomorrow afternoon. This will be at 1 o'clock. Here at Blacktown International Sports Park. It's the one two hit off the end of the bat. Slow roller to Fingelson takes his time. And the Adelaide Bite are right down to their final out of the evening. Final game of the series tomorrow afternoon, one o'clock, first pitch here at Blacktown International Sports Park. If you're in the area, get down to the ballpark. If not, you can listen on 99.9 SWR. Julian Dahl will have the call. Did a phenomenal job calling opening night last night. Did Julian? He'll be back on the mic tomorrow. 99.9. They nearly broke the servers of 99.9. Everybody wanted to listen to the broadcast last night. Julian will be back on air tomorrow night. And this could be it. Chopper to third. Good play by Chang. And the ball game is over. Fitting that the Blue Sox end it with phenomenal defense. That's what got them to this point of the ball game. And the Sydney Siders are 3 and 0 oh to begin the 2017-18 ABL season a 5-4 win and a doubleheader sweep of the Adelaide Bite today in Blacktown. Honoring the McGraw Foundation to raise awareness for breast cancer here in Australia, the Sydney Blue Sox strutting their pink uniforms. Looked phenomenal on the field. And they have swept the Adelaide Bite tonight's doubleheader and started 3-0. and oh. They will go for the four-game sweep tomorrow afternoon in a 1 o'clock first pitch. 
here from Blue Sox Stadium. Well, I'll tell you what, there were plenty of performances tonight that turned your head, but maybe none more than our winning pitcher, Clayton Frymuth. He was absolutely outstanding in the first time that we've seen him in the Australian Baseball League. He'll get the win going five innings, seven hits, four runs, all earned, two walks, and seven strikeouts. He won't be too happy with the way the earned run average looks after tonight. 7.20, allowing those four runs in five innings. But I tell you what, he was electric, and he's only going to get better as the season progresses. Five runs, nine hits, one error for Sydney. Four runs, eight hits, no error for the Adelaide Bite. Clayton Frymuth is the winner. Chris Powell is the losing pitcher. That just about wraps things up from Blacktown. On behalf of Craig Abercrombie, our producer, director of digital sports, my name is Andrew Reynolds, and thanks for hanging out with us on ABLTV.com tonight. Again, our final broadcast on ABLTV.com of round one comes your way tomorrow afternoon, Eastern Daylight Time, 1 o'clock start, as the Melbourne Aces will host the Perti. Chris Garagiola and Dan Vaughn will have the call. We hope you'll tune in then. But so long for now. Again, your final score from Blacktown, 5-4. to four. The Blue Sox have won the first three of this four-game set against the Adelaide Bite. Good night, everybody.